welcome to the Swarm and Shoot podcast. This is episode three, and I'm Manny Matsakis, and I would like to introduce you to Ernest Wilson. Ernest is our associate head coach, coaches super backs, works with special teams, and um, we go back a long ways. And uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about our story and then move ahead and talk about some things here at Defiance College. Uh, How's it going, Coach? It's going uh, great up here in the Big D. All right, the Big D, I'll tell you. It's like our our baseball coach, Coach Woodley, has those hats for baseball that just have one Big D on there, you know. So it's I think of that, and then I think about the Dallas Cowboys, the Big D. But but you're right, we are the Big D here. We are the real Big D. That's right, here we go. All right, so with that being said, you know, we met. Years ago, it had been early 90s, and um, I was coaching at Hofstra. You were at Allegheny. We had a, uh, I think we had called you to come out to our place, and um, we just connected. You stayed at my house, you know, and we've known each other ever since through the path. But what got you to come to Hofstra in the first place? What, What were your thoughts coming from Pittsburgh area all the way to Long Island just to visit with us and so forth? Well, you know, you guys called me up for an interview, and like I said before, I had told you before, I said that what was the great deal about everything was when I was at Allegheny, we always looked at your stats, and we were wondering how you were putting up such big numbers and everything, and so we were so excited, and then when I got that opportunity, I was like, wow, I'm going to go be part of the Hofstra, the Flying Dutchman, That's right. and uh, went out there, stayed with you guys, enjoyed uh, Joe's coach Gardy and and George you of course and and uh that's how we became friends and been working together yeah I mean it's it's interesting how a relationship started that long ago it's the first time we've had a chance to work together you know and you you have uh quite a resume you know in many respects because I think in coaching you're a product of the people you work with and for, you know, and usually no matter who you're working for, you're generally working in a good group of guys. And I, I think it's it's interesting. Here's a guy that, that was on a staff with Joe Paterno, which people might not realize that story. That's a story in and of itself. You know, a guy who's worked with Hal Mummy and uh, at New Mexico State. So you got Penn State, New Mexico State. It's it's just an interesting group of characters you've met throughout your coaching career take me i'm just curious i think i think our fan base our alumni are are intrigued by the whole deal working with a guy like joe paterno who's a hall of fame coach one of the best ever if not the best in some people's estimation what was it like um being on a staff like that number one when i think of joe paterno i think of caring he cared about everybody he worked for uh if people ask me why I move so often, and I tell them, I say, you know, one day Joe comes in the office. Uh, the the quote-unquote GA room was the room to come to to get away. Mm-hmm. And so here we are sitting in this big room, and Coach Paterno was sitting there. And I said, Coach, would you have stayed the ho- whole time like you've been? And he said, no, Ernest, if I was you, I would move around and get to know football. And so I did that up until I started having children. But, you know, it, he was a great man, and I, that's all I can say. Yeah. Who were some of the guys on the staff that you were fortunate enough to learn from when you were at Penn State? Uh, you know, we had Fran Ganner, who was the offensive coordinator. He also coached running backs. We had uh, Dick Anderson, mm-hmm. uh, great offensive line coach, head coach at Rutgers. Uh, Bill Kinney, uh, you know, he coached tight ends. Now I think he's at Western Michigan or someplace. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you think about Joe Sarah, who's passed, and – and then you think Greg Schiano and mm-hmm. and Kenny. Uh, I'm trying to think of Kenny's last name, but Kenny uh, he did a great job. Our receivers coach. So we had many great coaches yeah. out there. So you know, and it is it's Happy Valley, right? That's what they call it up there. Yeah, so it was it was kind of weird because <laughs> you know at that time we were number one, two, or three in the nation. Yeah, and those guys walked around real humble, and you would never know yeah. that they were people were looking at them. Sure. They always thought they were looking at everybody else. Yeah, well, and and, and there's something to be said about that, you know. It's uh, it's interesting. So you look at that, you get a guy like Joe Paterno, who, um, you know, a, a mutual friend of ours is Hal Mummy. You know, you were with him at New Mexico State. I remember when Hal was the head coach at Valdosta State, I was at Emporia State, and we would communicate, and that's how I got to know Leach, you know, with Mike and uh, – and that was an interesting relationship just to get to know those guys. And so you go 
you've got in some ways very different personalities, you know, uh, and, and it's just fun to hear about what was the how mummy experience like for you. It, it was different because I had coached before and he wasn't used to hiring older guys. Mm. I think I was 43 or something like oh, that. Oh, really? The time. Old. Okay. <laughs> so, so, you know, it was, he was used to going around, making sure everything's okay. And, and, uh, he would sit back and it's kind of like, I say, it's kind of like what you're going through right now mm-hmm. as a head coach, oh, yeah. you're a bunch of young, younger coaches. And so now you're teaching and trying to do about 80 different jobs at one time you are. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> so I kind of like sit back and I learn, but you know, he was a great coach. He was a great coach. He taught me how to make things simple. Uh-huh. And that's the thing about the air raid offense. It's very simple. It's uh, repetitive. You, you do it over and over mm-hmm. until you get good. Yeah. I mean, it, it is, it is pretty uh, interesting knowing how and, you know, we both have different relationships with him, you know, and he's a lot of fun to be around. And I wish him the best. I mean, that deal he's got in Dallas, working with Bob Stoops, which it's funny how you get so connected because Bob and I coached together at Kansas State, and now here's Hal working for him. And you know, then he had hired uh, you know Mike Leach off of Hal's staff at Kentucky, and basically brought the air raid into the Big Twelve. And, uh, and, and that story, a lot of people don't even realize how that even transpired where, where Mike Leach got the job because of Barry Terranova. Uh, okay. Barry was my publisher for American Football Monthly, and he was talking to Coach Stoops and had recommended, you know, uh, Mike. And I think my, uh, Coach Stoops had been at Florida as a defensive coordinator, and then, bam, he gets the Oklahoma job. He Initially, I think he wanted to hire a guy to run an option offense from Syracuse or something, and then uh, and then he flipped and hired Mike Leach, and the rest is history, you know, in this whole deal. So you've been in the air raid. You, you, you've been in, in run and shoot. You, 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 you look at those two systems. They are different. Um but what what do you how do you compare the two you know because some guys come in here it's like hey i'm a run and shoot uh, freaking dynamite guru or i'm an air raid guy uh you've crossed both paths how do you see those two offenses i see them as different and most people say oh no they're throwing the ball no there's two different things going on i think with your strategy especially with your run and shoot is similar to what I've been in before, and I always thought it could work anywhere and everywhere. Mm-hmm. You, if you just, if you're going to have to rep it off, rep it over, and see a lot of different looks. But once, if you do something in the summer, and you do something, I guess in spring, when you come out in the fall, you're going to be humming. I say it like mm-hmm. that. I think the air raid is more of a it's, it's an old school offense. Most people don't. You yeah. always talk. I, it makes me laugh when you talk about Tiger and being Middletown High yeah. School and the original inventor because you don't always think of the run and shoot as that old. Oh, it's but, been around 1954 run yeah. and shoot. Yeah. But you also look at the air raid and most of those plays are plays that we've seen before. Mm-hmm. He just chose certain plays. He and. Uh, the head coach at BYU, North, yeah, Lavelle Edwards, Lavelle yeah. Edwards, they picked the plays, so they you see those over and over too. Mm-hmm. But they're two uh, very much different offenses. Yeah, they are, and it's just funny. Everybody thinks, oh, I can merge these things. I know even Hal yeah. did like a, you know, his experiment was he went with June at SMU, and they were going to do Air Raid 2.0 or combine the two offenses and all that, and you know. I don't know. The jury's out on that deal because because they are very different. I mean, I have very even though I work with Leach for three years, uh, my I'm not an air raid proponent. And this is not what I grew up doing. So uh, I saw the differences. I can certainly appreciate it, and it has basically become a fad now, all the way to the point where Cliff Kingsbury sitting in the National Football League as a head coach. Which uh, you know, if it wasn't for his offense, he wouldn't be there. You know, so I think. You know, offensively, when you look at what we're trying to do here, what we're in the midst of doing, because you were with me at ground zero when we got here, you know, and and the program had been at a point where, you know, we came in there, been I was the fourth head coach in four years. Um, we're coming into a, a uh, an interesting situation where you're just trying to stabilize things 
and move forward. So we, we, we affectionately say that's year zero, year one is coming up, you know, because we got here, what, August 7th, we showed yes, up? Right? August 7th. Yeah, that was interesting, right? I still remember calling you and you were on the turnpike. <laughs> and I'm saying, I'm in route two, and you're saying, I'm in route. <laughs> so that's one of my memories. Yeah, it's crazy. And we get there, we didn't even know everybody. And it's like, yeah, you know, you're just trying to piece it together. And, uh, you know, and you get through the season, you learn, you know, you care about your players, even, you know, and I, I think it's interesting. You've, you've been at enough places to know when you come in, they're your players now. You know, it's not like, oh, they're the previous coaches guys or all this stuff. It's, these are our guys. And we had an opportunity to get connected with those guys. And we saw them improve last year. I and mean, we did see improvement throughout the season. It was fun to see them have some success as the season was going along. Because, you know, how do you when, – when you go through such – because you've done it as a head coach as well. When you come into a situation where there's all kinds of adversity – and you're try- and you're in the midst of turning something around, but you're just getting started. You know how do you label success in a football program where you're just getting going, and 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 especially where we were sitting? How, how what do you dictate as success? Well, I think success is just seeing a young men, like you said, develop, buy in. That's when you know you're having success, and I think you're having success as the head coach here because the young men are buying in. You know, they're not always what we want them to be, but they're saying, okay, I know coach coach uh, wants it this way. They're doing that. Then they, they're, they're kind of scared sometimes of letting you down. And I mm-hmm. keep saying, guys, you know, and we're not really concentrating. Even though we want that conference championship, we want to go to the playoffs. We're trying to concentrate on a young man. How how is his grades improving? And we know that we had an improvement in our academics. Yes. Uh, we've improved uh, – with the retention, believe it or not, uh, we've improved with the retention of the program. We've improved, uh, you know, even with the coaches, with the new coaches come in and they're out there running around recruiting and they're doing all yeah. these great things. So I, I think that there's success going and we just got to keep it going and keep buying in. And in the end, we'll be that champion everybody wants us to be. Yeah, I, I concur with that. And I think as we move forward and through this whole process, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, and uh, when we come back in a second here, uh, after we hear a word from our sponsor, I want to start delving into a little bit more into why defiance. And I want to get into that with you here. So uh, let's take a moment. We'll be right back after this word from our sponsor. This is Manny Matsakis, the head football coach of the Defiance College Yellow Jackets. Defiance College is located in beautiful Northwest Ohio. We have a tremendous campus here and we're led by Dr. Rich Ann Mankey, our president. Her team has created a renaissance here in recent years that has built our reputation on academics and student life. We have a wonderful opportunity here for you to find your life's calling. Make sure for you to become a Yellow Jacket, you take the time to contact one of our friendly admissions counselors so they can walk you through the process to find your life's calling and become a Yellow Jacket. Welcome back to the Swarm and Shoot podcast. And um, as you know, our associate head coach is here, Coach Wilson. And, you know, you got a little bit of the background here. We talk about our experience this past fall and what we were affectionately called ground zero. Now, one thing, and we've been at so many between you and I, so many different places, so many wonderful towns all over the country coaching. And I have noticed and I'm curious of your opinion on this, that defiance as a town is tremendous. I mean, it's like there's so much in the town to do so much opportunity for a small college. You would not think that a college the size of defiance would have this much opportunity uh, of things to do experiences around here. And, you know, you, you start looking at all the different restaurants, the things that, you know, all the, entertainment value you have in town what um well sure i think we have over 10 banks in this town which you know is almost twenty thousand people that's pretty impressive to me right yeah so so what what was your 
um, what has been your impression in the in the last year of Defiance? All right, right now, you know, I really love Defiance because it's a little different. It's a, it's a, it was, I'm a city kid. I grew up as a city kid from Columbus, Ohio, and then graduated high school in Baltimore, Maryland. But the cool thing is, I moved to a lot of different inner cities or, or even to some suburban areas, and I like this country setting. I like this small town. You know, you come on Friday nights and get to see Defiance High and the stadium's filled. You 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 can go get your ice cream, you go get your pizza, you go get your, some different eateries. So I'm really big on that. This town I was in before, we were Division Two, but we had, had only had two movie theaters. Oh. And <laughs> here you come here, you got nine. <laughs> so yeah. and you got a mall across the street. So you have many things to do in Defiance. And then if you want to get away, go to go to Fort Wayne, go to Toledo. They're right there. Detroit's an hour and a half away. So you have th- have cities around you, but at the same time, you've got that family home, all American town here. Yeah, that's a, that's a great way. What's your favorite place to go if you're going to go get something to eat in town? Not that this is sponsored by anybody specifically in that genre, but what um, you know, wh- wh- where do you like to go? Okay, you make this difficult on me because some people might know uh-huh. who I am and. Oh, I don't name their restaurant. They all know you in town, they Coach. They throw food at me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, g- give, give me three places right now. Give me no, three. I, I like Sweetwaters. I yeah. like Sweetwaters. I like Kissinger, Kissinger's. Yeah. And then finally, there's a little by-the-way spot, a uh, little Spanish-Mexican restaurant on okay. the corner. It's not a restaurant. It's just a store, but they sell food. Oh, it's like a grocery store. A grocery store. It's okay. on the corner of uh, uh, Douglas and uh, I'm trying to think of the other street. Second, maybe. Third second, somewhere. yes. Okay. Dallas and Second, and I love going there. Okay. Great take off, take out. Okay, so we got, we got some of that stuff going. Oh, Good. Yes. I know Coach Bolin likes his ice cream, so <laughs> you know he's looking for ice cream everywhere, You know, so you get that. Um, how has it been – like on this coaching staff, you know, we, we've got a, a good group of guys together. Um, you know, before, you know, this whole first year, all the assistant coaches have been over in the stadium there. And I think it's been that way a long time here and, uh, it's not air conditioned. We know that. So we're, you know, we move the offices over to defiance hall. Uh, but, but there's a certain amount of, Hey, You've got a one room with like seven, eight guys sitting in there at a time working. And uh, how is that dynamic? I know we're excited about the new offices. I get it. But what was that? What are the positives of that? I think everybody can start thinking of like, oh, my goodness, you get too close to guys, you know, and you hear people. I get that. What are some of the things that have come out of this uh, from a positive standpoint? You know, you get a chance to spend time with everybody. That's the first thing. And if you're selling to your team that, you know, everybody play together, then we got to all coach together. Mm -hmm. So that gets you an opportunity to try to get to know guys in and out. Uh, I I laugh at some of the things and I call it, you know, some of the situations I call it out to some of the young men Mm -hmm. that's on staff. So I've had an opportunity to do that. I've had an opportunity to learn. You know, uh, I'm, you know, being a head coach, like, you know, or, and, you know, you're talking about technology and whatnot, and every, these guys are high tech. And I'm, so I'm up here trying to learn this stuff and keep up. You and, and me you know. both, coach. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm learning. And so now I'm beginning to get into it. First, you're a little intimidated by it. Now you're beginning to get into it. Uh, I, I think that's probably some of the two main things, but there, I'm up here trying to think of the third thing I was going to tell you. But there's some great things about all these young men. They're, they care about their young men that they're recruiting. You know, initially with this being put put down or ground zero, and mm-hmm. we're trying to get all this stuff uh, installed and put in. You know, you don't have that time, and there's a lot of stress. But at the same time, it's a good time. Mm-hmm. So we're, it's going to come out, and, and you, you create that energy. And you always talk about energy. Give me some energy. Yeah. Give me some energy. So, and I kind of laugh a little bit, but I know what you mean. And I laugh usually because I'm remembering the situations I was in. Oh, yeah. And I was asking for the same thing. Mm-hmm. And so those guys are creating the energy and doing some good things. Yeah. And, and it's, it's interesting, the diversity of the staff. You know, you, you look at, and diversity to me is more like, the diversity of the backgrounds you've got guys with a variety of different experience. And I know, you know, I've had coaching staffs, you know, at 
as a Division One head coach at Division Two NAIA, and I feel like this is the best staff, top to bottom that I've been fortunate enough to put together. You know, I know we've compared, you know, you give me some other place. You had some good coaches on the mm-hmm. staff, but top to bottom, I, this is quite a group we've got. And um, it's, it's a bit of a think tank. You know, you got a lot of stuff going on. And, uh, you know, and, and I, I think I feel privileged to work with guys like you and, and the other guys on this staff because we do learn every day. Every day yes. we learn something new, and there's so so much to do there that is exciting. You know, the other part I want to ask you about is you um, have been on the forefront of helping me as because of your experience as as a head coach multiple times, mm-hmm. and you know. I know when I get out in public and they say, Hey, coach Ernie's fantastic. Or, you know, they're, they're like, Hey, we're, we're behind what you're doing. Cause you have a way of building rapport with people in this community. And you're not from here. I'm not from here. You know, none of us are, you know, and you've built tremendous rapport in a relatively short period of time. What, what is it about the way you see this town and the people in it that has given you that edge in building building rapport because a lot of coaches can't do that and you you thrive on it. Well, you know, number one, I think being in a head coaching situation, and I had some great coaches behind me. You know, we had talked about uh, other coaches, but Kirk Ferentz and Tony Dungy and those guys, but they always were people person. Uh, mm-hmm. people persons and, and so that's one but you know it's just caring I was a military kid we grew up military family uh, dad retired military so you learn to make friends as you move you learn to make friends quickly and I think when I was talking to you on the phone prior to coming up here you know you were selling hey this is how this town is going to be this is what's going to be and so you quickly learn number one to come in and make friends you come in not only to make friends, but you, you, hey, I enjoy the situation. I'm an Ohio boy, and I know that mom's right down the street, two and a half hours away. Uh, you know, and then at the same time, you have good people that's working around you. So as long as you have that, good things are going to happen. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. And I think that's great insight for anybody out there, you know, because we get a lot of coaches that watch this, high school coaches and all that. And I think there, there, there's quite a bit to get from this, and it's, it's a great opportunity. And I think what we are building here at Defiance College is a special program, a program that um, I have noticed that with the influx, influx of all these recruits we've got coming in, it's like they can engage in something and be part of something remarkable. And not just like, oh, I'm just going to go someplace where they're winning or they're moderately successful. They can be part of a tremendous turnaround. And and that's fun. You know, and you and I have both been part of some turnarounds. And I think there's nothing quite like flipping a culture when it comes to this. So, you know, what what are some of the things you're noticing in the recruits that we have gotten commitments from that are going to be in this upcoming class if, if you take a look at that whole class from a character standpoint and and sort of the demographics of that group what do you see in that group that our fans can be most excited about you know you say something all the time in the staff meetings and i know you don't want us to always say what's in the staff meetings oh, that's fine <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know you, you want to run the program you always say i don't care if this is a division three program I want to run at his best of ability. Mm-hmm. I want to run like a division one program. And once you, once you start saying that, we start trying to concentrate on getting those top athletes that probably shouldn't be playing in division three, but they're playing in division one. So when you're talking about the athletes coming in here, I think many of them have F, their FCS to division two players, players that maybe in four or five years, we look up and they have an opportunity not only to go to CFL, to NFL, to uh, arena, but you know what? In the very end, I think that we're trying to get better students, and you can see that in our overall GPA and our recruiting. I think it's close to a 3.0, if not over 3.0. The higher test scores that we're getting in, we are preparing young men for the future, and that's what people can be excited about when they're watching that on the field, watching that product on the field. They're going to see – Oh, that young man, you know, Joe Davis, he's going to graduate. Not only is that, but I heard that he might have a chance at the pros. So 
you know, and then don't forget about our rings. We got to get our right. rings. We totally want to leave with one of these, right? <laughs> but, you know, that's what you're going to see, a great product put out on the field. Yeah. Well, Ernie, I'll tell you, it's been great. And, you know, it's so much fun for me to actually get the opportunity to coach with you because you know a guy for so long. And, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with this thing. And uh, every day is, you know, we keep improving. It's a constant state of correction for me, for you, and every coach on our staff and our team. And it's all about the process. We get that. And, um, you know, I thanks for coming on the show. Um, Thank you for having me. Oh, well, I appreciate that. And here's uh, just so everybody knows that uh, on the next Swarm and Shoot podcast, we will have our offensive line coach and strength coach um, who also deals with uh, organizing recruiting for us. And that is uh, Coach Chris Shank. And uh, he's got some good stories to tell and some great ties to the area. And uh, we're excited to get him going. But uh, once again, hey, it's a great time to be a Yellow Jacket, and uh, we're fired up, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode.